Let us pause and remember we are in the presence of a loving God. Martin of Tours was born in the early 4th century in modern-day Hungary. His father was a senior officer of the Roman army and was stationed in northern Italy. That's where Martin grew up. At the age of 10, he decided he wanted to become a Christian, and so he became a catechumen. His parents were not pleased. Although Christianity had recently become a legal religion in the Roman Empire, most people, especially military families like Martin's, worshipped the god Mithras. Mithras was honored as the patron of allegiance and loyalty to the emperor. So Martin's parents were quite displeased when he became a catechumen and began preparing for baptism. As the son of a veteran military officer, Martin was required by law to join the Calvary, which he did at age 15. The most well-known story about Martin has to do with a beggar he met near the city gate of Amiens. It was a cold day, and the man was nearly naked. Martin took his military cloak, and with his sword he cut it in half, wrapping the beggar with half and himself with the other half. Legend has it that when he fell asleep that night, Martin had a dream in which he saw Jesus wearing that half cloak. And Jesus said to him, Martin, who was still a mere catechumen, clothe me with this robe. Martin was eventually baptized at age 18. When he was 20 years old, just before a battle in what is now Worms, Germany, Martin came to the conclusion that his faith in Jesus Christ prohibited him from fighting and killing. I am a soldier of Christ. I cannot fight, he said. In modern terminology, he had declared himself to be a conscientious objector to war based on his Christian faith. Note, this had been the belief and practice of all Christians from the time of Christ until the time of the Emperor Constantine. It was only then that St. Augustine came up with the so-called just war theory in the 4th century, which attempted to justify Christian participation in killing. Needless to say, Martin, like thousands of Christian conscientious objectors ever since, was charged with cowardice and jailed. In response to the charge, he volunteered to go unarmed to the battlefront, and his superiors planned to take him up on that offer, sure that he would be killed almost immediately. But before they could send him to the battlefront, the opposing army sued for peace, and the battle never occurred. As a result, Martin was released from jail and from military service. Martin then made his way to the city of Tours, where he became a disciple of Hilary of Poitiers, a Christian bishop who was noted for his defense of the doctrine of the Trinity. Martin later returned to his hometown in Italy and converted his mother and some others to the Christian faith. He never won over his father. In those days, a great debate was raging between Christians like Hilary of Poitiers, who believed in and taught the aforementioned doctrine of the Trinity, that the Godhead is a relationship of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and those who followed the teaching of a theologian named Arius. Arius did not believe in the Trinity. Jesus, he taught, is not divine. Jesus is lesser than God the Father, fully human, but not fully divine. Indeed, Arius taught Jesus is a creature created by God, perhaps the greatest creature God ever made, but a creature nonetheless, and not the divine word of God who is consubstantial with the Father, that is, made out of the same stuff as the Father. Martin of Tours openly opposed Arianism, and on more than one occasion he was arrested, scourged, and forced to leave a city by proponents of Arianism. Eventually, he moved to an isolated place and lived the life of a hermit. Martin later returned to Tours in France, and with land given to him by Hilary of Poitiers, he established what may have been the first French monastery. He lived there for ten years, instructing his disciples and preaching throughout the countryside. The people of Tours greatly admired Martin, and they demanded that he become their bishop. That was not something he wanted. In the year 371, Martin was tricked into visiting Tours. He was told of a sick person there who needed his prayers. When he arrived, he was brought to the church, realized he had been tricked, and then reluctantly allowed himself to be consecrated bishop. 
Martin was not afraid of controversy. He openly opposed the Druid religion, while at the same time, along with St. Ambrose, rejecting the practice of some bishops who routinely convinced the emperor to put pagans and heretics to death. Martin convinced the emperor to spare the life of one such heretic, a man named Priscillian, who was accused of magical practices, among other things. For his efforts, Martin was accused of the same heresy, and Priscillian was executed after all. Martin of Tours died in the year 397 of the Common Era. He is the patron saint of the nation of France, of the poor, and of conscientious objectors to war. One biographer notes that in France, the story of his refusal to bear arms was conveniently forgotten when Martin also became the patron saint of soldiers. And finally, two bits of trivia. Some biographers claim that Martin was the uncle of St. Patrick. And second, the reformer Martin Luther was baptized on the feast of St. Martin of Tours, February 11th, and was named after him. Interesting. Let us pray. Lord, teach us to love and serve the poor the way you do and the way St. Martin of Tours did. Help us to be faithful to our baptismal and confirmation vows. And give us the strength and courage to be peace warriors, women and men like St. Martin, who work to resolve injustice and conflict without violence. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever.